So this video here is going to be a, a first on this channel. And if you saw the little thumbnail, it's called World Mission Society Church of God. Fairly new cult, and I'm using the term cult here. Uh, I'm going to mention a number of things about this group, which uh, you will see then a link to their website, as well as to an extraordinarily helpful uh, other website, which is going to expose them. Let me tell you how I got exposed to this group. It's probably been 10 plus years. And, and, and like many of you, you're, you're doing stuff at home, and all of a sudden you, you get a knock on the door, you go to the door, and in this case I go to the door, and I have two finely dressed Korean women. Well, you know, you, I, you see two people, I mean, instantly I think, uh, odds are they're probably Jehovah Witness, or they're probably, they could be Mormon missionaries. Well, I didn't see the black Mormon missionary tag, and their opening line to me was, do you know God the Mother? And I'm like, what? What is this? And I, I don't even remember how the exchange went then, but that was my first experience with them. No clue what they were, where they were from, what they were trying to preach. And so I remember I stopped and I go, who is this knocking on doors talking about God the Mother? Well, I found out World Mission Society Church of God. And then I found out why they were doing it. Well, they're from Korea. That's why there were two young Korean uh, women at my door and uh, they were trying to build their church. So you know what? Look around. I bet if you do a Google search, some of you are going to find, you type in World Mission Society Church of God churches and see what's around you. Um, some of you are going to find them. Some of you, I, um, I am sure, have already ran into them like I did. And this group kind of went on the back burner for me for a number of years. And only until recently, has come to the forefront again because they are growing. And I did that search again around where I live here. I was quite shocked. I got quite a few of their churches within driving distance of, of me around here. I'm gonna give you a couple aspects. And again, you can look at the links. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail because you can find it on the links should you need to know. So I want to encourage my Christian, not Adventist, because Adventists aren't Christians. My Christian brothers and sisters be on the lookout for this. This is here, um, and it's probably in your town if you live in a, if you live in a big enough, uh, you know, urban or close to an urban environment. So God the Mother right now is in Korea. I bet you didn't know that. And God the Mother, I think she's either 80 or she's a little bit over over 80 years old. They also have a uh, a very famous pastor. His name is An Song Hong. An Song Hong died in 1985. He practiced Buddhism until 1946. Then he became a Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> Did you catch that? Seventh-day Adventist. When he died, and I'm, there's more to say about Seventh-day Adventism here, by the way, in this group. So when he died, Pastor, I'm not, I'm not even sure I'm saying the name right. Uh, I'll say Joe, uh, Joe Chol Kim and Zhang Gil Ja, Mother God, they took charge when An Song Hong died in 1985. 1997 is when they adopted the World Mission Society Church of God name. Now, An Song Hong, they teach today, was the second coming of Christ. So Christ died in 1985. But he was the second coming of Christ. Mother God, still alive, South Korea today. If you go on their website, you'll find teachings like this, that you have to drink the water of life from Mother and Father. You got to receive eternal life from God the Mother. Not the Father, like the Bible teaches, but God the Mother. On Song Hong, they teach, established the New Covenant in 1948. Now, his Seventh day Adventist baptism is an absolutely key, essential component of that doctrine of theirs. I'll say more on that in a minute. Um, so when I start doing some research on this group, you know what I found out is you can't go buy their books. They won't give them to you. They keep this stuff under lock and key. The only way you can get them is if ex members leave and maybe donate them uh, to a you know a thrift store or donate them somewhere or give them to somebody. But you and I, you can't walk in there and say I, I want to buy your books. Well, like I said, I've been aware of this group for years, and I can't show you their books. 
I can't even show you pages from their books because they are crazy um, uh, filing lawsuits, etc. against anybody that shows any likeness of Mother God or Aung San Hong or any of their books. They'll say, oh, copyright infringement. And even though it's not, they'll still file it and YouTube will bring your video down. They investigate and they go, oh, no, it's not a copyright infringement and bring it back up. That's what in the links below, this one of these these ex uh, uh, World Mission Society groups has. That's the trouble that they have faced uh, with them. But you can watch many videos on on that again the X website below. But you know what? I can't show you the titles. These are their books. I've got seven of them that I'm not supposed to have. One of which I read, and that's the genesis of, of this video. And that book that I read is, I got it and I'm protecting the cover, but it's, it's in here. And we'll, we'll cite that in a minute. I thought it's so odd. When it's, first of all, when you're in a religious group and, and they close themselves off like that to the outside and they say, sorry, you can't have our books. There's one group that instantly came to my mind. Another group that I, I've studied who is, I think, still around, not as big as they were. This is 1960s. This group was, was at their peak. You know, of course, I, I wasn't even a Christian then, like alone, even old enough to drive cars or anything. Uh, the group at that time was called Children of God, and they produced a lot of books called the Mo Letters. Mo. Mo is short for Moses. Their founder is named David Moses Berg. And so when I, when I saw that, and I'm going to read from you what, um, this is just one volume of the Mo Letters, and here's what it says. Property of the children of God not to be removed from the colony without permission. See, here's another group that says, uh-uh, you can't have our works. I mean, David Moses Berg, Moberg, they called him, was a prophet. And these are his prophetic words in here. They call them Mo letters or Mos Moses letters. And I've got volumes of all the, the, the Mo letters. That's what it reminded me of was, was David Moses Berg and the Mo letters. So, like I said, this is a hardcore group. I read one of their books, and it's this one that's in the covers here that I, I can't show you. That is the basis of this video. And it was pretty astounding what I, what I read in, in, in this book. Um, they are just like Seventh-day Adventists. They quote Bible verses, ignore Bible passages. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses do that, too. And, and other groups. Uh, more about An Song Hong and his Adventism. So his baptismal record is in Korean. I can't read Korean, but it's on that website that's in the link below. It's the X, the group, the group that exposes the World Mission Society. They have his actual baptismal record, which shows that it's 1954, not 1948. Now that's key to this group because they believe that An Song Hong reestablished the New Covenant Passover in 1948. So it coincides with his Seventh-day Adventist baptism. This group that I'm talking about right now, it's a Seventh-day Adventist offshoot. Pure and simple. Um, let me just kind of read to you here. Of course, I can't read and I can't show you. Um, first of all, the book that I'm quoting is called My Sheep Listen to My Voice. And it's by the pastor I mentioned earlier, Kim Jo Chol. And in this book, on page, let me look at it here. I am reading page 181. And when I read this in this page, I went, here's on page 181. About two-thirds of the page is about a guy named William Miller. And they talk about uh, Jesus... Uh, uh, answering uh, prayer and entering the most holy place October 22nd of 1844 and that the uh, God raised up the Advent movement through William Miller and this proves prophecy. Any doubt now this is a Seventh-day Adventist offshoot? Are you aware of any other Seventh-day Adventist offshoots? Yeah, I, I bet you are. Like this one. Good old David Koresh and Waco. This one is written by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They had to, 1993. Well, this one was written in 1993, too. Now, this one I just got by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This one I, I bought brand new and read in 1993, and I knew right then 
I mean, it's clear. You ought to, you ought to get this book called uh, Madman in Waco. And who's it say it's by? By World Authorities, Waco Coat. Oh, um, Brad Bailey and Bob... Darden. You can even stop the video, zoom up on that. This was fantastic. I mean, I read this right when this event happened in 1993, and it's clear as glass. There's a relationship here between good old David Koresh and the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, the Seventh-day Adventist Church says, no, 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 we have no relationship to him. True, you have no official relationship to him. But all its members were Seventh-day Adventists. They all, or largely, I mean, like the overwhelming majority of them came out of the Seventh-day Adventist church and shared many beliefs in Adventism. Uh, so, yeah, so here we are again. We have a, and this is, this is a serious group. This group controls its members big time. And that's why I call it a cult. This is, this is not to be taken lightly. So... They are, like I said, technically an offshoot of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So like this group, here's their shock line. They, matter of fact, they're really big on college campuses. Uh, they're there. You know, if you've watched enough of my videos, that I am engaged in ministry uh, outreach to Muslims. And, um, and, and engage them quite often. I attend on a, on a, uh, a routine basis a, a ministry uh, to Muslim outreach that we have. At one of our outreaches, let's say about probably a year, year and a half ago, two of these members from this group showed up at our Muslim outreach and started dialoguing my friend Greg. And you're, by the way, you're going to see Greg on a future video when we do the Green Cord Vision coming up soon. Um, and Greg started dialoguing them there at our outreach. So they just showed up. They may show up sometime for you too. Because their opening line is, do you know God the Mother? And they'll take you to Genesis 126 and 127 as if that's supposed to show God the Mother exists. Just read the verse. Just read the passage. There's no hint of a mother. Nonetheless, that's what they do. They'll also take you to Revelation 4.11. And they'll say, you know, God made it this way to show us, even spiritually, that we can receive eternal life through God the Mother. And they'll take you to Revelation 4.11. Here's, so, you ought to make some notes for this, just in case you run across them, and that's really the reason why I'm making this video, because they're growing. Should you run across them, here's three verses you can use to refute this whole God the Mother thing of theirs. Go to Malachi 2.10. Malachi 2.10. Where it says, do we not all have one Father? One Father. So that right there takes out of the equation the female image of God. We have one Father. Isaiah 44, 24. The Lord is the maker of all things by himself. Sorry, God the Mother was not there and not needed. Likewise, Isaiah 45, 12, where God says, I created all things and stretched it out with my hands, singular, no God the Mother. Those are just three quick things you could do amongst probably dozens of others that many are already thinking of should you encounter this group. So uh, get ready, they're coming. But anyway, back to their gospel message and why I uh, did this video, especially when I read this when I read this book. So the message of this church is really some things to do and not to do. They're going out with a warning about what the false churches, of course, they're not the false church, they are the one true church. Um, I guess they're the real remnant, right? And, 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 and what all the other churches are doing in terms of false doctrines, and they're out to correct those, to make you stop from doing them. That's really their message. Their message is stop doing these things and worship God the Mother. I want to say that's pretty much if Now, they don't say that's their gospel message as clearly as that, but if you ask them, I think that's what they're going to say. So here's the five things that this book teaches. All churches are doing wrong. And, and a lot of the content of this book that I read in here is about these things. Number one, <laughs> it's going to sound familiar, you fail to keep the Sabbath. You must keep the Sabbath in your churches. And they mean Saturday Sabbath. They're not talking about no uh, uh, Sunday Sabbath, which actually both are unbiblical. There is no Sunday Sabbath. And the Saturday Sabbath is not for Christians. But nonetheless, see, that's where their Adventism comes through. However, they say that you need to keep the Passover. 
and you need to stop worshiping the cross. So here we are again, kind of that little SDA mind where we're going to go after the Catholics. And that's kind of where that goes. Even though they use Catholic, they, 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 it, the language just makes you think they're, they're criticizing Catholicism here, not so much evangelical Christianity. Another thing, you better not celebrate Christmas, Thanksgiving, these holidays are not in the Bible. Don't celebrate them. And then they say, and then the churches, um, some churches have false doctrines like the soul is the body. Or another false doctrine is to say the Trinity is nonsense. Now that's not to say that they are Trinitarians. I'm telling you from reading their book, when I saw their explanation of the Trinity, it's the same thing I saw in Seventh Day Adventism. And I did a video on this in terms of the Trinity, when the Trinity is described in a modalistic fashion. When you use a cup of water with ice and steam, that's modalism. That's not the Trinity. That's how these guys describe the Trinity. So like Seventh-day Adventism, they use the word Trinity. They don't have it right. These guys don't have it right. Seventh-day Adventism doesn't have it right. But that's beside the point. So the message of this book here, when they, when the message that they're sending out is enforce Sabbath keeping. Stop celebrating Thanksgiving and Christmas. Don't worship the cross. And I even think they would say uh, there's a difference between a cross and a crucifix, which they don't discuss here, while not in this book. Their co other core teaching is worship God the Mother. So there's their message. Enforce, enforce the Sabbath. Stop holidays. Don't worship the cross. Uh, you know, uh, and, and worship, in other words, recognize God the Mother. You know what you could do with this group? This is what I recommend that you do. If you ever run into them, you can just ask them the question. I do this all the time, even with groups I, I may not even recognize. I say, what's your message? What's your gospel? Sometimes you gotta help them with the word gospel. Gospel is good news. What is the ultimate message? The good news, why are you gracing the doorstep of my residence? What, what's your intent, what's your purpose? What is it I need to know? And from this group, I bet you're going to get one of two things. You're going to get probably some things that I mentioned. If you're a Christian, you should stop these things. Or you need to recognize God the Mother. Okay. Now, I'm telling you from, from decades of experience in witnessing to cults and, and non-Christian groups, it's easy to get off topic. And they will try to get you off topic all the time. That's what Adventists do in my YouTube post all the time. And the Muslims and the Mormons and the J-dubs that I dialogue do it all the time. Stay on topic. Let me ask you, what's your good news? And they're going to give you a message. I can guarantee you it's not going to be 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now, here's, here's the good part between you and this group. This group at least confesses a belief in the Bible. So now you can open up the Word of God and show them what the true gospel message is and tell them you are not bringing the gospel message of the Bible. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The gospel message is all about the death of Christ, the burial of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, and what it means to the unbeliever in terms of their salvation. And there's a, there's a lot to unpack there in just those four verses. And where did the Apostle Paul get that gospel? He got it from, in Galatians, the risen Christ revealed it to him. And what happens if we preach a false gospel? If you've watched my videos, you've, you've heard me quote this countless times. Galatians 1, 6 through 9. The Apostle Paul says, if you preach a gospel, even though we or an angel from heaven preach a, a, a gospel other than the one we received, and he tells us what he received from Christ, you're cursed. And then he says, I say it again, you're cursed. You're twice cursed. This is your chance to extract from these members What's your good news? What's your intent and reason and purpose for coming to my door and sharing with me what you want to share? Because I guarantee you it's not going to be about 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And that is your chance now as a Christian to reach out to these people and show them what the Bible says. Again, like I said, you are dealing with a hardcore mind control cult. Do not expect them just to fall backwards and say, Oh, yeah, you got me. Uh, can I go to church with you next week? And I believe now. Let me get baptized. You know, this is, this is hard. This is really hard. When someone is in a group like this, 
it can take them years to get out. But the Word of God says, My word will not return unto me void. Share it. Share it with them. Share God's word. I'm going to do a second video on this group soon following this one.